and welcome to Let's Go Live. It's the end of week five, episode 23. I'm Maddie. Hello, I'm Greg. And all together now, we, we are live. live. I'm sure lots of you know this already, but you can join us live here in our spare room every weekday morning at 11 a.m. You sure can. And you know, the show is packed full of quizzes and games and guests and makes. And of course, you. Lots mm -hmm. and lots of your photos coming up in the show, of course. There are lots of you uh, with us right now. We can see you in the live chat. So hello to everybody watching live. And also thank you if you're joining us later. Uh, thanks for making the time to watch us back. So uh, we had a, who have we got? God, it moves so quickly. I know. Um, oh, we got the Purnell family from Vietnam. Oh, wow. Hello, um, hello. Colby Cooper and Miller. Hello, guys. Uh, we've got Ava in Durham, Izzy Cara and Isla in Guildford and Arthur in Derbyshire. Sebastian in Northern Ireland. Hello. Uh, Michael Michelle in Bristol. Uh, we've got Isabel in Warrington, Rebecca in Malden. Who else have we got? Oh, we've got um, Elsie in Huntington. Hi, Elsie. Uh, we've got Kai and Ruben in County Kerry in Ireland. And a hello from Julia. So many. Hello to all of you watching live. Hello to all of you watching back. If you <laughs> haven't seen all, what number are we on? Uh, 23. If you haven't seen the other 22 <laughs> episodes, you can go back and watch them on the channel. And do click that subscribe button if you haven't already. Yes. So it is Project Earth Week. Uh, but before we get started on today's show, which is all about animal helpers, uh, let's take a look at what some of you got up to yesterday. Oh, Thank you so much for sharing your photos. photos. sent through. Okay, mm -hmm. this first one. Okie dokes. Uh, this is Ben. He made a solar and wind farm out of Lego uh, after being inspired by our Power the Planet episode yesterday. Nice Great. one. Uh, this is James. James made this water wheel, which he powered using rainwater. Oh, that's a great idea. Uh, Alice and Merrin, they made their own solar oven using a shoebox. We love this, by the way. This is really resourceful. We told you you had to use a pizza box. You don't have to use a pizza box. We've seen solar ovens made from shoe boxes, cereal boxes. As long as there's a shallow box, it's good. I, I saw all sorts of different designs. Yeah, really, really good. Great all job. Right. Uh, next up, this is Holly and Lilia. Uh, they made some s'mores using their solar oven. They said they normally use a barbecue and they said this is much more environmentally <laughs> friendly. It is. I don't think it would cook a sausage though, mind you. <laughs> um, here we have Elijah and Songwei. They're really proud of their solar oven and I don't blame them because those look delicious. And last up, here is Freya, um, made this pinwheel, pin wheel, <laughs> and then she took it to a windmill near her house that makes flour when the sails are working. You can call it a pin whirl if you want but to. I, it's one of those words I just can't a say. Pin, a pin and a whirl. A pin whirl. Oh. Oh, well, well. Um, if you would like your photos to appear in the show, then you just need to ask a grown up to send us an email at hello, let's go live at gmail.com. And that's where we get all of the photos that go into the show. Uh, and we love seeing them. So thank you so much for sending them yeah, over. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, so today we are talking about animal helpers sure are um, and by that we mean um, we're going to be talking about animals that need our help and yeah. um, but also about animals that do their bit to help the planet actually while we've got the live chat going tell us what your favorite animal is in the live chat and also if you're watching back drop it down in the comments below uh, we'll, we'll definitely go back and read them all we always do That's maddie a nice idea. what is your favorite animal it is so, so difficult to pick a favourite animal. So I'm going to give you three that I happen to quite like right now, if that's okay. Um, so I really love pangolins. Pangolins, <laughs> pangolins yeah. Pangolins, yep. Yeah. Um, I also really like the duckbill platypus mm. because they're weird. Mm. Look at the duckbill platypus. Mammals that lay eggs, very cool. Very strange, um, but, but awesome. But I also love octopus because they are masters of disguise. They're practically magicians. What about you? I think mine's going to be a turtle. Oh. Do you remember when we got to go to uh, the sea turtle sanctuary mm -hmm. a couple few years back? Yes. When we travelled. Uh, <laughs> and, and, uh, and then we got to swim with a hawksbill turtle in the wild. It was incredible. Yeah. Actually, there's a, there's a playlist on mm -hmm. the homepage of the YouTube channel. Underneath all of the different shows from Let's Go Live, there are two yeah. playlists. And one of them is Maddie and Greg's Adventures Around the World. And it's yeah. on that if you want to watch it back. Uh, what should we see what some people have said in the in the live chat? Uh, we've got a toucan and a penguin. Joe's, um, Joe's favourite is a donkey. Sorry, cut you up. Amazing. We've got a snow leopard. Uh, we've got a red panda. 
Angela says a panther. Oh, Jaguar. <laughs> because I love cars. See what you did. Clever. But apparently Pippa loves puppies. Who doesn't love puppies? Quite a few dogs and cats and dolphins. Oh, Vanessa says a giraffe. Yeah, giraffe. Nice. Bees. Oh, we'll get to them as well. We will get Amazing. to Amazing. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. <laughs> so the animal kingdom is incredible. But here's the thing. Quite often, humans forget just how many other animal species we share the planet with. Yeah, so we humans are mammals Mm -hmm. and uh, we are just one of 6,000 species of mammals, right, on our planet. And they're just the ones that we've actually identified so far. Okay, so we're talking from the smallest mammal, and that is the Etruscan shrew. Look at it. It weighs less than two grams. That's that's barely nothing. Um, And then you've got the largest living marine mammal the blue whale epically big look at wow that. Mm-hmm. so six thousand species of mammals might sound absolutely mind-boggling uh, but there are over one million species of insects right and again that's the ones that we've actually kind of found and named we think there may be as many as 10 million species of insects on this planet hang on that that, that fact, fact bomb yeah. was way too quiet there we go. <laughs> Gotta make it count. Um, so, I mean, what about these insects? Have you heard of uh, the walker's moth? Wait till you see this picture, right? Look, Look at, at it. it. If you didn't think you liked insects, you do now. <laughs> Look at this fluffy little face. <laughs> um, and then there is the, uh, how about this, the titan beetle. Whoa. That is the largest insect on the planet. Oh, so cool. Crazy. And then you've got all the other invertebrates. So you've got the snails, mm-hmm. the worms, the starfish, the jellyfish, the octopuses. And then there are birds, amphibians, reptiles and fish. It's a lot. It is a lot. Mm-hmm. It really is a lot. Yeah. Um, but every animal, no matter how big, no matter how small, no matter how cute, no matter mm-hmm. how ugly yeah. you think they are, um, <laughs> they do play a part in helping our planet. Yeah, but what about the animals that aren't on the planet anymore? So Mm. last week we talked a lot about dinosaurs, sea monsters like plesiosaurs and flying reptiles. Um, But there are lots more animals that did live on the planet, but sadly they don't anymore. And we say that they have gone extinct. In just the last 500 years, we think that we've lost around 800 species of animals. Wow. In just 500 years. Yeah. It's bonkers. And sadly, there are a lot of animals um, who are alive in the world today that are on the brink of extinction. And we say that they are endangered mm. or even critically endangered. And if you think about that, if they're on the brink of extinction and then the last one does die, mm. there's going to be no more. Yeah. You're not going to be able to get... I know it's, it's a bit of a yeah. downer. It is. It is sad. But the thing is, it's not all doom and gloom, though, because there is lots that we can do to help our wildlife, especially the wildlife that is local to our area. But we'll talk more about that a little bit later. Um... Because it's time for... <laughs> it's time for a quiz. Come on. Be your best and favourite animal. Turtle. <laughs> oh, hang on. What are you doing? Tur- is it, that's the turtle sign. Yeah, the, the diving side for turtle. Yeah. Nice, okay. I really hope you're all being your, your preferred and favourite animal in the dance. That was hilarious. <laughs> Me right, too. this game is endangered or extinct. Ooh, okay. So we're going to show you some photos and some pictures. And it's your job to tell us whether you think the animal you see in that picture is endangered, meaning that it's still on the planet, but it's uh, it's at risk, or if it's extinct, meaning it's no longer on the planet anymore. Start with a couple of easy ones just to warm you up. Yeah. Right? Okay. So what do you think about this one? It's a diplodocus. Is it endangered or extinct? You, yeah, you got it. It's extinct. It's extinct. Yeah. It is, it is. Um, and if you yelled out, uh, the asteroid, it went extinct mm. because of the asteroid. That's a very good guess. But actually, the Diplodocus went extinct over 80 million years before that asteroid mass extinction. Crazy. Mm. Okay, here's another one. Here's another warm up one. All uh-huh. right. So this is a very cute looking mountain gorilla. So <sighs> endangered or extinct. So first think. Mm-hmm. Is this still around right now? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. So this is endangered. Uh, in fact, it's critically endangered. And if you were to take all of the mountain gorillas and somehow invite them onto a plane, like a big one, like a Boeing 747, <laughs> then actually, if you took all the mountain gorillas in the whole world, they'd only fill up two of those planes. Oh. 
no. So there are really not many. Not many left not at many. all. Okay, so those were your warm-ups. Mm. We're now going to play this properly now. All right, so let's get started with our first picture. This is a saber-tooth cat. Extinct or endangered? It's extinct. I think yeah. the fact it's a drawing might give it away. <laughs> uh, but it was last seen 10,000 years ago. And those front fangs were apparently 20 centimetres long. All right, wow. next one is the Kakapo. Mm -hmm. uh, so, heaviest planet in the world? Planet. Planet. Wow. <laughs> 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 heaviest parrot. <laughs> heaviest parrot in the world. Um, so, they don't fly. They're nocturnal. They're awake at night. Uh, extinct or endangered? Mm. Endangered. Mm. In fact, critically endangered, this yeah. one as well. We reckon only around 60, 65, probably is between somewhere yeah. in there, of them left. New not Zealand, very many, they are. Not yeah. many at all. Um, okay, next one. This is the Selenodon. Uh, it's a mammal and it looks really cute, but actually, if it bit you, it would inject venom through its teeth. That's kind of cool. You don't usually think about mammals having venom, do you? <laughs> Uh, endangered or uh, extinct? It is endangered. I wouldn't but, know for that one. But they were considered extinct. Um, oh. But then a few years ago, scientists found some uh, alive. So they, oh, cool. they're endangered. Yeah. Okay. I mean, not good they're endangered, but no. better than them being extinct, yeah. right? It means we can try to do something about mm -hmm. it. Okay, here's one for you. The beaver. Ooh. Right? So here's the beaver. Now, do beavers still exist? Yes, they do. Um, now, here's the thing. They were endangered, right? Right. So they actually got to the brink of extinction about 400 years ago because people were hunting them for their meat and their fur. But now mm -hmm. their numbers are rising, especially in Devon and in Scotland as well. Go so, beavers! What about this one? This is a Chinese paddlefish. Is it extinct or endangered? What do you reckon? cool thing about these paddlefish is that they have uh, been around since the time of the dinosaurs. I'm going to guess with a picture like that, it's still around. No, sadly not. Oh. No, the paddlefish or the Chinese paddlefish was considered extinct very, very recently. Um, we hadn't seen any since 2003. So I believe it was last year. They have now been declared extinct. Oh. Other paddlefish are still around, but those those ones are extinct. And actually, there's a video in the description box below, because a couple of years ago, I got to swim in a tank with some captive paddlefish. Right. So not wild ones. These are captive ones, so they're wow. safe in an aquarium. Yeah, amazing. Cool. Uh, last one. Okay. Last one on the quiz is this one. Oh. It's a bumblebee. Yeah. Now, extinct or endangered? I mean, come on. We've seen these around in the mm -hmm. garden, but we're putting this one up because, yes, this is endangered. You wouldn't have thought this about the bee because you mm -hmm. see quite a few of them, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's because they like cold weather. Mm -hmm. And as we've talked about this week, with global warming, with yeah. the temperatures getting uh, hotter around the planet, mm -hmm. they don't like it. Yeah, but we should say that's just about that specific type of bumblebee. That's not yeah. that's not the same for all bees, but yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, and you've got something that you're going to do at the end of the show I do. that you can make at home to help the bees. I do. Um, so there are loads of reasons why extinction happens. That could be new predators, new diseases, or a catastrophic event like an asteroid. But us humans have played mm -hmm. a big part in this whole thing, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Overhunting, yeah. destroying habitats, uh, the homes that the animals live in. Mm -hmm. Not good. Yeah, but it's not always on purpose, though, because um, the human population, the humans as a group, we are, that population is growing and growing. And as that population grows, we need to build more homes to live in. But often that means building mm. homes uh, in places where, wildlife, in wildlife's natural habitats. So we're slowly but surely sort of encroaching onto uh, animal spaces, which isn't good. Um, I chuckled because somebody just said their favourite animal is a Greg with a leaf blower. Oh, really? <laughs> really? It's a throwback to earlier in the, early in the week. Um, but speaking of animals, um, we actually saw some very, very strange yeah. activity in our garden yesterday yeah. afternoon. We didn't we, did. Mads? Yeah, really odd. In very, fact, in very fact, strange. Let me get my binoculars up because we might be able to take a quick look out in the garden now. Everyone, get your binoculars up yeah. and can have a look. see anything? See if you can spot something. Can you see any animals in the no. Can you see anything there, Maddie? No, I can't see anything I at can't all. See anything there. What do you reckon? What about in those bushes? Possibly in those bushes at the back. back. No. no. What about over to the right? No. Over to Up the a bit. left. I'll, I'll swing them left. Swing them left. Can we see anything? No. Nothing no. at all. Right. Mm. All right, come back then. Here we go. Wow. We saw 
some of the most extraordinary, most beautiful animals in the back garden. We did. First, we saw the dung beetle, perhaps one of the world's most underestimated animal helpers. <gasps> oh, here it comes, everybody. Binoculars, Binoculars up! up. Feces is a fact of life, and without a way to get rid of poo, our world would soon be covered by it. Which is why the dung beetle is such an important animal helper. Some species ball up, others waste, not to get rid of it, but rather to eat it. One dung ball can create enough food to last a beetle a very, very long time. Here it is showing off its trademark reverse roll technique. Some beetles don't just eat the dung, however, they lay their eggs in it. <gasps> Very rare footage indeed. My favourite dung beetle fact is that some dung beetles will actually live next to... <clears throat> next to monkeys' anuses. Okay, I think we should move So that they there. can jump onto the poo. That, okay, yes. Onwards, onwards, onwards. <laughs> fantastic, uh. fantastic sighting we saw yesterday. Uh, binoculars up everybody for the next one. What is this? Oh, my goodness me. This is a uh, majestic octopus, big head, big eyes, eight long arms, most often found in warm tropical waters, not back gardens. I wonder if she'll show us some stilt walking. There we go, picking up shells and walking with them on the sea floor. If she feels threatened, she'll pick up shells and create a little den for herself, camouflaging herself from sharks and other predators. They're the recyclers of the seabed. They use whatever they can find as armour. Looks like this one's tucking herself away for a while. Hello, hello, little octopus. Ah, oh, well, well, well. I wonder if we can see a photo of an octopus. Oh. What do you think? Let's see an image of an octopus. Ah, there it is, recycling its shell. Okay, but that is not all we saw. No, no, we also saw beavers. Yes, nature's engineers that look after our waterways. Oh, I don't believe it. Binoculars up, everybody. Here they are now. Look. Wowee. Beavers are vegetarians. They strip bark from logs to eat and gnaw through trees to break off logs. Look at their teeth. They were orange. They build lodges to live in. They can be bigger than a double garage. <laughs> their homes, not the beavers. They slowly dam up a river. It can take 20 days to build a lodge and the family work together to interlock the timber. Their dam building helps support waterways and creates healthy habitats for lots of wildlife. Well done, beavers. Gosh, gosh, well, gosh. Damn. Can we take off our David Attenborough <laughs> outfits? Now? Yeah, yeah, can we? <laughs> oh, wow, crikey. Wait. I have to say, we are the biggest fans of Sir David Attenborough in the whole wide world. That was our homage. It was, it was, absolutely. To the main man himself. So there you go. So an octopus is a brilliant animal helper because it recycles uh, shells and other things it might find on the sea floor. And then you've got dung beetles that farm poo and beavers that help to manage our waterways to create <sighs> habitats for other wildlife. That was a bit bonkers, wasn't it? Yeah. As so all usual. of those animal helpers. Now, yeah. Wherever you are right now, um, you won't be very far from an animal who mm -hmm. helps us, who helps, they're really busy and they help us mm -hmm. live our life and protect our planet. So how, should we have a look at a few of them? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so let's think, something we see in our garden a lot where we are in the UK are these squirrels. And these are our planet, tr I'm trying not to speak like David Attenborough yeah. now. <laughs> These are our planet's tree planters. Um, so we've all seen them uh, foraging in leaves and uh, in trees, gathering uh, nuts or seeds from our bird feeders. Um, but actually, they are helping the ecosystem because they will go and bury those nuts and they'll store them. But what happens to the nuts that they don't come back for and eat? They grow. Exactly. They mm. will grow into trees. And we need as much tree as much tree action as we possibly can <laughs> can get. Uh, let's look at the next uh, local animal helper then. Okay. 
worms. So these wriggly little creatures play a really important role in improving our soil. So they really are a gardener's best friend. They break up the soil by munching through it. Mm -hmm. And their castings, their castings, their worm poo, are a brilliant fertiliser as well, which enriches the soil. Um, Can I give you a a fact? I'm ready with my fact bomb. Yeah. Okay. I want you to drop the fat bomb as well at home. So this is the thing. In one single square meter, right, that can contain more than 150 earthworms. Wow. That's incredible. That is is really, they are gardeners' best friends. Um, And then our final, uh, what should we say, local animal helper are the birds. Now, you may remember back to Garden Week when we set up Bird Cam. Shall and we up Bird Cam? Yeah, we've got it with us again today. So this is actually a live feed that we have of our bird feeders right now. So let's see if we're visited uh, by any birds. Just hold it there because you never know. They might turn up. Um, so birds are bill- brilliant pest controllers because they might uh, gobble up any of those little insects or pets pests that could damage plants that we're trying to grow Uh, but also they help gardeners because they scrabble around for things to eat they get lots of air into the ground and into the soil anything on the bird feeders oh it's quiet out there today it's really quiet it's because i've actually got lots of natural food around at the Mm. moment they don't need the bird seed so much yeah when we did garden week Mm. six weeks ago Crikey, wow. in week one of Let's Go Live, uh, when we're just all figuring this out and you were yeah. joining us and we were having a laugh, um, we had quite a few birds. Yeah. Quite a few birds before the show, not necessarily that many during the show. <laughs> they turned up. <laughs> but actually, birds are also brilliant bio indicators. Um, by that, we mean they can actually, um, they can be telltale signs of climate change. So, as the earth warms steadily, the birds think the seasons are changing sooner than they actually are. And that means they may migrate, fly to a different place sooner than perhaps they should have done. And that's not necessarily a good thing because it means that the birds are a bit confused and they could arrive somewhere when there simply isn't enough food for them there yet. So bio-indicator means that mm. what they do indicates what's going on yeah. in kind of the wider world. And they can help us indicate climate change. Mm, nice Term. Really have we seen any birds yet i'm kind of relying on you lot in the live chat as well no, to tell me nothing going on nothing going on all right let's take off bird cam oh well let's baron we tried <laughs> um but as well as putting out bird feeders uh we also showed you how to make a hedgehog cafe in week one we did yeah but we have something else to make as well don't we yeah so um we've got a little something that you can make it's very up maddie's street uh yeah. go on you introduce it this is your right. it's your thing so I am going to show you how to make a BB&B. Have you ever been to a B&B? I've been to a B&B. That's a bed and breakfast. Yeah, but a BB&B. Oh, it's a B&B for a B. Is, is that? Wow, I'll try saying that quickly. BB&B. I'm going to make a BB&B for the B to... so these are brilliant animal helpers mainly because they are some of our key pollinators um without uh, the bees uh, lots of our plants and flowers wouldn't simply wouldn't be able to make new plants and then we wouldn't have lots of the food that we eat now so we really want to help out our bees so one of the things we can do is make them a bee B and B, or really, this is kind of more of a nesting box. So you might think, oh, Shall here I get we go. Closer? Yeah, why not? Hang on. There okay. Is. So this uh, isn't Greg's tin of beans from yesterday. Oh, well, it was. That got consumed. <laughs> My tin of seeds. That's thrown back to brilliant bodies. I've week. Got a tin of seeds here. <laughs> so if I actually look, you can see what I've done. I have packed it full of little tubes. Okay. So it's worth saying that at the beginning of this episode, we saw a fluffy bumblebee. We also know that there are uh, honeybees, and honeybees they live in a hive. Lots of bumblebees they like to live in little nesting sites underground in burrows. Yes, I didn't realise this. I don't know much about bees. Mm. You know, animals, especially bees, your thing. I thought that they would all live in hives. No, no, they don't. They live in lots of different places depending on the type of bee. Mm. But actually, a huge, huge, like a big proportion, a big amount of the bees that we have in the UK uh, are solitary bees. They live by themselves. And these are things like mason bees or leaf cutter bees. Mm. And actually, they like to nest in holes, just like the ones that we made here inside the tin can so So how have you made them so all i've done is i've actually i've got a combination i've got a mixture of different things inside this can i've got some pieces of garden cane so if you've got any keen gardeners you might have some cane that you could chop up into smaller pieces i've also used uh, some cardboard straws like that and what you can also do is just get 
some paper, some bits of scrap paper, and you can roll it up. So I'll just show you how I've rolled it here. Rolling that up. Here we are. There we go. And now I've just got a little tube that you can make that way as well. And I can put this straight into the tin can. So why don't I just pack this uh, can with a few Where, if, if this lot make them, where should mm. they put them? Okay, there we go. So you want to mount it. Uh, it's got to be, a, be about a metre off the floor and it doesn't want to have anything in front of it because a bee wants to be able to fly in safely and easily. Yeah. But as this one particular one is made out of uh, metal, it's a metal can, it could warm up. So you don't want it anywhere in direct sunlight because it would just get too hot inside there. But if a bit of shelter might be nice as well just to keep um, it from getting soggy inside. You could decorate your... B, B and B. Yeah. You've got to go for those five stars on TripAdvisor, right? You've got to go for <laughs> like, you've got to deck it out with some nice kind of decorations. Yeah, definitely. But, and also it is worth saying that, um, so there are, whilst it's lovely to watch the bees, uh, whether they're solitary bees or bumblebees or honeybees, they can sting you. So even though they never, ever want to, it's best just to watch them from a distance as they make their way way in and uh, lay their eggs and make their way out again. Loads more Maddie beekeeping videos yeah. on the YouTube channel. Again, uh, I think it's down and it's above or below that playlist of Maddie and Greg's adventures. There's a <laughs> Maddie's uh, bee thing. So go to the main yeah. page, you'll get that. Right, okay. Um, we should wrap up the show. We've got some more pictures to show. We've got yeah. some other stuff to do, but people are saying selfie. Everyone's yelling selfie in the live chat. Now, a really good point. Should we go back to We to should really go back to David Attenborough for selfie. So okay, David, right, okay, all right. right then. Okay, get ready for the selfie. This is, this is time for you guys to uh, prepare as well. Okay. Going in that way. Put on the... Put on the Got to get our token blue shirts on. Blue shirts, David Attenborough blue shirt. Okay. Um, I'll go for this because I don't have any binoculars. Okay. All right, all right. you go. You creep around that side. I'll creep around this side. Okay. Okay, three, two, one. Is oh, hang on, where's that in the eye? There you go. Know. It's the awkward selfie. <laughs> really, we should have been, it's the, the awkward, awkward selfie. selfie. Okay, good. All right, we've done that. <laughs> Can you go? me cough every single time. There All right, so um, one more batch of your photos from Earth Week coming up. Uh, before we do that, Let's do a few quick Friday thank yous. We always oh, like to put yeah. these in. Over to you. Uh, thank you very much to Ellen Roberts and to Jonathan Sandstone. We've had lots of conversations with, with them and they are so helpful and inspirational. And also thank you to our small but wonderful Let's Go Live team. Uh, and a big thank you as always to our uh, patrons who support us via Patreon. Yeah, we um, couldn't do this show without our Patreon support. Um, and it's helping us to bring on that small team. So thank you so much. We've left our Patreon details in the description box below if any grown-ups want to go and take a look but there is no obligation at all we're going to continue doing these shows for as long as we possibly can uh, and finally the biggest thank you mm -hmm. is to you lot if yeah. you're watching this live if you're watching this back uh, give yourself a high five give someone next to you a high five thank you so much for supporting the show it's just us in our spare room making these every morning and also thank you so much for sharing them as well keep yell about them keep yelling about them if other people uh, mm -hmm. may enjoy them let them know thank you you. Okay, so with that in mind, let's see some of your uh, Project Earth makes, things that you have been doing uh, this week. Here's the first one. Ah, oh, lovely. So George made his own solar oven with the help of a furry friend and your s'mores look delicious. Mm. This is Becky, Tom and Nat. Now, they've sent us in this photo uh, from when in the past they visited their dad at his wind turbine construction wow. site. So those are huge wow. turbine blades. Look at them. That's really cool. Uh, here we've got Xavier and Sebastian. They had loads of fun. Also made a soda oven. Gosh, s'mores are popular. Uh, this is Jalen and Anari. So they treated themselves to some s'mores made in their solar oven. They like to say, after they had their lunch. True, they are a special <laughs> treat. Um, here's James. And James made his own water wheel. Uh, and he used it to help his dad water the carrot seeds that they've planted. All right, let's squeeze one more in. This is Alicia who lives all the way in sunny Spain and they use uh, solar panels to heat up the water in her house. And here she is showing how hot that water is. Lovely. Uh, we get all of the photos that we use in the show from our email. So if you would like to get your photo on the show, then you just need a grown up to send us an email to hello, let's go live at gmail.com. That is it for mm -hmm. Animal Helpers. That is it for Project Earth. Yeah. Um, next week, 
Tell them all about next week, Matt. Well, next week, it is Mini Makers. Oh. It's a collaboration with our brilliant maker friends at the Life Science Centre in Newcastle. It's a week all about making, tinkering, engineering yeah. and playing so all the episodes have now been scheduled up on the youtube channel in each one in the video description you'll find a list of the kit that you need for the mystery makes in each episode yeah but we do have a full kit list as well uh you can see it right now all you need to do is go back watch this pause it and that is your full kit list for next week but 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 please note it doesn't matter if you don't have everything that is on that list. The whole thing about next week is being creative, about being resourceful. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you don't have any yogurt pots, you don't need to go out and buy some yogurt. No, just right? find another little plastic pot. Yeah, or even whatever, you can probably make one. So next week we're gonna be playing with all this sort of stuff. So don't yeah. panic, just it's whatever yeah. you've got in the recycling bin, yeah. get it out, we're gonna use it. That list has also been posted onto our social medias as well, so you'll find it there. Yeah. And I think that brings us to the end of the show. It does, and the end of this amazing week. I've really yeah. enjoyed the yeah, uh, project. Uh, Let's just say goodbye to a few people. We've got Matthew from Malta. Ah, oh, that's wow. We've got Ellie Rose. Hi. Uh, who else we got in here? Uh, we've got Lily from Droitwich. Jake and Maya in Liverpool. Uh, hello, Bella. Lots of people getting excited about uh, Mini Makers Week. Yeah. Uh, got Lizzie and Maddie. Uh, good nice name. name. <laughs> uh, we've got Tanij in, in South End. Who else have we got in there? Who are we've got a Helen, I can see a Helen and Jameson as well. And a Sebastian in Northern Ireland. So hello, hello to all of you watching live. Hello to everyone watching back. Uh, in fact, goodbye. Yes. <laughs> Subscribe, share the video. As always, stay curious. We will see you next week, Monday, 11 o'clock for Mini, Mini Makers. Makers. Bye. Bye.